on, do you believe that? Healer, awesome and power, I 
praise the Lord. Why don't we clap our hands one more time unto the Lord. Come on, let's give God praise. Let's give Him glory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, let it come out from the innermost place of your being. He is worthy. He is holy. He is righteous. He is God. He deserves all praise, glory, and honor. For there is no king like our king, no God like our God. In the name of Jesus. For greater is he, greater is he that is in you and I than he that is in the world. Oh, praise God tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We believe that God, we believe that God is doing great things. I have a testimony I want to share briefly with you tonight. We were extremely blessed and privileged to enjoy an afternoon at the Blunt family home yesterday. Prior to walking out of the door, we were told that little Gabriel was going to be going for an x-ray or an ultrasound today because upon an x-ray there looked to be two dark spots on his bladder and or on his kidney. Forgive me if I have that exact location incorrect and so we very casually but yet intently we laid hands on that sweet young boy and we begin to lift our voice and pray a prayer brother all britain sister melinda and myself as well as his family members gathered around that child in the living room but i'm here to tell you that you don't have to be in the house of god as long as you know the name that is above every name as long as you can find the strength strength to whisper the name of Jesus Christ they went to the doctor today there are no spots there are no signs there is no other issue it's a settled deal because of the healer because of the healer of our souls hallelujah the healer there is no greater God than our God those of you that are fishermen you will understand what I'm about to say. But when you go and you prepare a reel and you get it connected to a pole and you go fishing, there is what is called the the test. The test determines how strong that line is. It is an indication of line strength. And if you're fishing for 10 pound fish, you would get 10 pound test and so on. You would not want to use 10 pound test to go shark fishing. Neither would you want to have 100 pound test to go perch fishing. You get the picture, but it's an indication of line strength and the measure of poundage is to match the species that you're going after I'm here to tell you tonight that hell cannot produce a line strong enough to reel in and hold back a child of God because greater is he that is in you greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world there's nothing that we can not break there is no force there is no stronghold there is no addiction there is no power that can hold back the power of our God and I believe that God is in this house tonight and I believe that that God wants to not only do a miracle in Gabe's little body but he wants to do the miraculous in this house tonight the waters are troubled P-O-L-R we have entered into a season and we are going to step up into the waters tonight so we're going to worship one more time but I want us to come to this altar and I want us whatever you're facing whatever you're dealing with wherever you're crying from a point of pain a place of frustration a place of desperation or if you're simply here tonight to to give God glory and rejoice in what the Lord is doing in your life let's come up close let's come up tight and let's really lift our hearts and prepare the way for the word of the Lord tonight God is in this house the hand of God is moving in a mighty way Whatever you brought to the Lord tonight, I want you to lift it up to God, knowing, knowing.
knowing that there is no force on the other side of what has you and what's grabbed hold of you that can ever keep you. There is no line that we can't snap. There is no way of escape that we cannot find because God will never put more on us than we can bear without making that way of escape. Praise Him. Would you lead us? Hallelujah. To worship. Let's worship tonight. God, we love you.
let your voice come out tonight. Let your praise lift in this house. Lord, we worship you. We worship you in this place. God, we give you our everything. Jesus. before you this evening father as a living sacrifice let it be a sweet savor a sweet odor lord god a perfumed god praise and we lift it up to you tonight god in the holy name of jesus christ in the holy name of the lord jesus we thank god tonight for his sweet presence we're so thankful tonight to have the privilege and honor of worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. As Eleazar was on his way to find his master a wife, the Bible tells us in Genesis that while he was there and while he was praying, the Bible said that it came to pass before he ever had finished speaking and or praying unto the God of his master Abraham that the answer to the prayer appeared I'm here to tell somebody tonight in the Holy Ghost that God is an answering God he is a prayer answering God and I'm here to tell you tonight that we don't always have to agonize over our ask there are times that God won't even allow the prayer thought to fully materialize so that we can articulate it and God can answer God can answer while we yet speak and this is what I feel to do I feel for us right now tonight well, be, before we transition, let us begin to pray. And I'm believing that somebody here tonight, if it be only one person, I felt this this afternoon, if it be only one person, before you ever finish articulating and expressing what's in your heart in prayer, the answer's going to already appear. You're going to find the answer before you ever leave the house of God. You're going to find it when you wake up in the morning. I don't know where and how it's going to appear but God's going to allow it to formulate and materialize before you ever get the words out of your mouth we often think we've got to agonize over every prayer and wait but there are those prayers in those moments because it was a moment in time he had traveled 
and he needed an answer there was no turning back without an answer and someone's in that place tonight so why don't we begin to just whisper that prayer to God whatever it is you've been praying for whatever your family needs whatever you've come needing from God tonight that's it go ahead come on articulate it express it it doesn't have to be loud and boisterous but just speak it and I believe before it ever escapes your lips that God is going to allow the answer to appear you may find it when you wake up in the morning you may find it when you show up at work tomorrow it may be in your paycheck on Friday you may find it when you check your balance you may find it when you get home there may be an answer a text a phone call a letter in the mail I don't know how it's going to appear but whatever you need from God I just feel like this is one of those moments that God is going to answer before it ever comes fully out of our mouth an expression of prayer in the name of Jesus Christ Lord we're praying for a revival God we're thankful for what's happening we're thankful for the trouble waters in the spirit God we're believing God as you're speaking so ever clearly God that we are entering into a season of not only revival but of in gathering harvest God we thank you we speak God that we shall have all that we need every resource God to do the work you've called us to do to have the revival you called us to have Lord to receive the increase and the multiplication of what you desire to do in the earth and in this community God strategic people strategic souls we believe you're going to send them you said give and it shall be given unto you pressed down shaken together and running over you said Lord shall men give into your bosom I'm praying God send those men put those men in our pathway that we can do the kingdom work that you have assigned us and God we're thankful I I pray for the miraculous in this house tonight. I pray God for everything in the house tonight that is in need of healing every area, every area of the body, the mind, the spirit and the soul, every system God within the human body the respiratory system the circulatory system whatever it be, God do the work tonight. In Jesus name we praise you and we thank you for the answer that has already arrived. Can we clap our hands to the Lord right now that's the God that we serve those are not just fables those are not just filling up the pages because God wanted a really thick book I believe every word in that book. I believe everything that happened to the icons of Scripture can happen to me and you tonight in this 21st century. Praise the Lord. Why don't we find two or three? Let's hug their neck, shake their hand, whatever is appropriate. But let's spread the love of God throughout this house in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. It feels so good to be in the house of God tonight. What a beautiful evening it is and what a great place to be. There's no greater place than the Pentecostals of Lee Road to be on this Monday night. And uh, it is so good to be together. So thankful and grateful for the many incredible reports of what God is doing, not only here, but throughout the network. And we give him praise for that. And uh, just I'm so thankful to be here tonight. There's an anxiousness in my spirit to get to the Word of God. I'm so thankful we are entered into, or we have entered, I believe, into a great season of revival. And uh, so thankful. I want to say thank you for everyone that has prayed, that has fasted, that has been extremely faithful. Every single one of us contribute. If it be just a drop each, at some point, the glass will become full and run over. And I am so grateful for every single individual that has 
given and has contributed your part in what God is fixing to do and what has already begun. Very briefly tonight, a few quick announcements. Receive our offering and get out of the way and let the man of God minister to us tonight. If you're planning to go to camp meeting, please be sure to turn your packets in as we make preparation that is coming up next week, July 4th through the 7th. This coming Sunday, I know we had an incredible blowout service and at the very end, Pastor Marty was able to announce briefly about this coming Sunday. We will have one multi-campus service. We haven't met since April, but everybody is excited to be back together again as one church family. And I, I have asked as much as is possible. I know that for some it might not be possible, and that's okay. But as much as is possible before we light the bottle rockets and, and, and heat up the barbecue. Let's do our very best. I know there are some, the Filer family, I thank God for them and I appreciate their consideration. They text me and said, Pastor, would it be a good weekend? And when I reminded them about multi-campus, they are not going to leave until after the church service. And I deeply appreciate that because every one of us matters and makes a huge impact on what God is wanting to do. So this coming Sunday, July 2nd, as much as is possible, we ask that everybody be here for one service at 10 a.m. We are going to have a very, very special guest speaker by the name of Brother J.H. Osborne flying in from Indianapolis. He has pastored for 45 years. Many of us that have been to men's conference, we are very familiar and have been very blessed by his ministry, highly anointed, and I believe that God is going to do something very special this Independence Weekend. We've got a lot, a lot of moving pieces, but some very special elements to the service this Sunday that you will not want to miss. Then the following Sunday, Bishop and I spoke yesterday as well as uh, the pastoral team. We feel that God is doing something very special with Brother Albritton. He was already committed this weekend, and we were also. But the next two weekends opened up for him, and we already felt in the Holy Ghost to go forward in this season of revival. So the 9th and 16th, Brother Old Britain will be back with us here at Lee Road only, and we are very grateful for that. I had mentioned last year that when we have guest speakers, that in advance I would give you two weeks' notice for a special offering for those guest speakers that come, and if not, that meant that we would just do our very best to take care of the men of God and the ministry that passes through. So we have not had any offerings so far, so I would simply ask, I know it's the holidays, I know camp are here, but I know that revival does not come without sacrifice. So I would just simply ask you to be in prayer between now and July 9th or July 16th, and we will take up a very special offering for the man of God that has ministered so mightily to us and has blessed this church family. And I know that God will bless us in return because the laborer is certainly worthy of his hire. And I know that he's here. Normally I do that when they're not here, our guests but I know that we all understand so please be in prayer with us over that the July 3rd Monday night no service no service for the obvious reasons the holiday weekend but we do want to make the most of Sunday July 2nd and then finally this coming Friday night for those of you that would like to and those of you that have students that are a part of the VBS going on at Mandeville this coming week Friday night will be our kids praise performance at 7 p.m. and certainly all who would desire are welcome to attend that it's going to be an incredible night on Friday why don't we stand thank you for bearing with me through these very important announcements I want to be sure that we are always well informed know what is going on and hopefully we are taking a look at our weekly because we try to keep that fresh and current but uh, we are so excited God is positioning us for the greater things to come and we are extremely, extremely excited. Sister Melinda and I are on a week-long fast this week because we're hungry. We are desperate. We have spent the last five years, and I've been negligent the last few months because of uh, several things, but we have spent the last five years, the first week of every month, fasting, Sister Melinda and I. My sweet wife, she has not skipped the last couple of months like Pastor has. But I'm telling you, there is something deep down on the inside of me that just refuses. I will go 
to a grave refusing to settle for ordinary or to settle for status quo. I am wanting to see the heavens open and to see God do what I believe through the elders and the prophets that have passed through have prophesied we would see and we would receive. And there has got to be those of us that are doing it, no doubt, that are willing to pay the price to see it happen. And I, for one, am grateful to be just a small part of what God is going to do. Father, we love you. And God, we thank you for what you're entrusting us with. This is a season of visitation. And God, I don't want to not recognize it for what it is. And Father, every time it is without fail, when a sacrifice is laid upon the altar, you, Lord God, as long as it is in alignment to what you ask of us, God, you cannot help yourself but to consume it and fall upon it. Father, I pray, pray tonight a blessing over this beautiful body of believers and all that have been so faithful and sacrificial and not just their giving of finances, but their living for you and their servitude and ministry. And God, I'm asking tonight as we bring this offering that you would bless it, that you would break it, that you would multiply it, and God, that you would shower down upon us in deluge that which we need to do the work of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, let a blessing fall on every family tonight that is in this house and those connected to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we come from the back to the front, let's come and let's just remain standing for the man of God to come and lead us in the word of God tonight. appropriate for us to give God just the next few moments of praise and thanksgiving. If you were in the house yesterday, you know God's presence. Hallelujah. The anointing and the spirit of the Lord is meeting with us in a special way. Can we lift up a combination of thanksgiving and praise? Hallelujah, dear Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. I praise you. I praise you, Lord, for every mind that's being set free. I thank you for every heart and mind and spirit that is being strengthened. I thank you, Lord, for every life that is being empowered by the work and the voice of the Spirit, the action of the Spirit of Almighty God. Hallelujah. I thank you for the liberty of spirit that is coming into this house in such a powerful way, the river and the flow, the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we give you praise. We give you praise. Let me see if anybody can concur with what I'm feeling in my spirit. I'm sensing a a shift. We've been talking about the liberty of the Holy Ghost, and I'm telling you what, yesterday morning in worship, Worship has been great, but there was a liberty in the house yesterday morning. There's an anointing in this atmosphere tonight. The Holy Ghost is shifting gears and doing some beautiful and powerful things. And God, we give you glory. We thank you so much for meeting with us. We thank you for walking among us and ministering to us in Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. Jesus' holy name. Amen. I... I, I, I don't really specifically have God's address as far as being able to send him a, a literal thank you card. 
So would you help me just look up at the ceiling and say, God, we just want to say thank you. We never want to take it for granted. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I know you're looking at a black ceiling, but somewhere up there is our God. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for every word, every act of the Spirit, every, every life being touched. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As always, I give honor to this great church. Give honor to Brother Sister Trinacost, Brother and Sister Marcelli, the wonderful people. I do want to thank uh, Missy and Avery Blunt for hosting us yesterday with a spread fit for uh, about 25 kings and all their families. And my goodness, that was some good eating. Thank you all for hosting us and treating us so kindly yesterday. And what a great report we receive uh, today. And uh, thank God. Thank God for it. Praise God. First Kings chapter 18, verse 41. I absolutely look forward to being back on July the 9th and the 16th. And... Uh, we're just going to believe that God's going to continue to move and continue to bless in a, in a mighty, mighty way. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. I kind of feel like I'm, I might be right on target because one of Pastor Paul's last words in his prayer a moment ago was, Lord, let a deluge in the spirit come for everything that we need. And I'm like, I like those words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to minister tonight on the subject, the sound of abundance. The sound of abundance. Could we give Jesus a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless and you may be seated. 2010, 2010 was a challenging year for my wife and I. It was a year that God chose to allow some tough things to come our way and uh, some things in life and in the spirit realm. It was just a challenging year. We began that year very desperate for revival. We started the year off and in consecration, both of us. There had been times she had walked in consecration and fasting and times I had, but that particular year we were both so desperate that we both went on an extended time of consecration together. And from the turn of the year until leaving from because of the times, neither her or I uh, eight, we just went on a stretch of we're so hungry from God. And we came home from, we act, well, we went to the because of the times. And when you're, when you're starving for revival and for breakthroughs and for some things from God, there, there are certain prophecies you want to get. And then there's a couple of that I got that you really don't want to get. And I just want to thank God for prophets that will prophesy the word of the Lord, not just what you want to hear. But one man came up to me in the altar service and he said, Brother Albritton, I feel to tell you. Now, I've just sought God 42 days of consecration between my wife and I. I'm ready for a good word. And, 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 and the man walks up to me in the altar service and he said, I just feel to tell you I see a darkness coming over you. He said, I, I see challenges. He said, you're not going to be able to, prevent, to project vision to your church because it's going to get so dark, you're going to have to just be trusting God for the word for Sunday and the word for Wednesday. It's not going to be able to be about numbers. You're going to have to trust God. Now that's a word. That's a word. And then a man that God had used to minister the word of the Lord to me several times said later on a couple of days after that, he said, uh, Greg, he said, you and Jamie, I need, I need to meet you all for lunch. I've got something for you all from the Lord. And so we ate lunch and we talked and, and he said, it's pretty simple what the Lord gives me. He said, um, he said, it, he said, I wanted to take you out to eat, spend some time with you. He said, because it's just, just all I get from the Lord is 
whatever it is you're going through, it's not nearly over yet. <laughs> now, that's two words that you want to, you want to, I, I mean, I, that, you, people were lining up wishing they had got those words instead of me. And uh, landed back in Denver. It's because of times. This is supposed to change your life. This is what man of God, ladies of God, I mean, you go for to, to get a word from, from the throne room, you know, and, and, and so desperate that we had sought God, but God said it's, it's not over yet. You're just going to have to walk in trust. Literally, when I landed at the Denver airport, got in my vehicle, I remembered to turn my phone back on from being off on the plane. And it was someone saying, I need to talk to you. And it was the first of four families that left our church in the next 30 days, all for various reasons. Uh, three of them with two children, one of them with three children, a large portion of people that helped us in the church. And, and it was just a season. Turn to your neighbor and say, it was just a season. So it gets on about June. I think it was June when Brother G.A. Mangan passed, and we're just we're trusting God. Me and I talked a little bit about that season yesterday briefly, and and but we were trusting God, and we were doing everything we knew to do and fasting and in the Word, and and Brother G.A. Mangan passed, and we felt like we cannot miss his home going service, and so we got in the car and we drove and we were in Alexandria for two days and we drove all the way back to be back in Colorado for leading the church and, and for services. And, and it was on the way home, driving those 18, 19 hours from Alexandria to Loveland, Colorado and go north out of Dallas up, 35, hit 135, Salina, Kansas, head west on 70 for about six hours. A lot of driving. And then north of Denver, an hour, we would be home. But it was on that drive west from Salina, Kansas, headed west towards Denver. Somewhere in that day, somewhere, it may have been still driving north, just telling the Lord, I need something encouraging. I just need something from you to know that you're with us. I just would like to know that I and we are in the will of God and that, that you're with us. I know you're with us. I would just like an assurance. And I got an impression, and the impression was that hold on because I'm with you and I'm going to bless you and your life and your steps. And this, this season that you walk through, walking through, it's not the end of the journey. You keep trusting me. You keep following me. I am with you and I'm with your family and I, I, my hand is in your life. And I was like, Lord, I just, I need to hear that, Lord. I need to hear that. And it was, it was one of those impressions that was so specific. And I looked today to see if I had made specific notes and I couldn't, so I, I might miss it by a minute or two, but this is early up during the day, somewhere in, in Kansas driving and it's, it's hours before 6.36 p.m., but I got an impression that just dropped in and said, if it rains at 6.36 p.m., then you'll know that I'm with you and my hand is in your life. Now, you're driving all day, and folks, I couldn't see a cloud as far as I could look. Any of y'all ever cross Kansas? Hey, man, it's either tornadoes or sunshine. But it, it, and it, it, was, it was just dreary, desolate prairie driving. And it started getting 536 and I'm driving west across Kansas, not a cloud in sight. And I'm like, Lord, I just, I just need to know and, and 636 and that's weird, but that's what it was. And, and it was there and, and 615 came and no clouds and 630 came and no clouds and 635 came and no clouds and 636 came and no clouds. And I said, well, that just must have been me. <laughs> but I know I'm still going to keep trusting in God. And we got close to Colorado border, and I looked down at my cell phone, and instead of saying 645, it said 545 because I forgot that central time zone changed to mountain time zone. 
635 like it happens in the Midwest. <sighs> here came a few clouds and here came a drizzle and here came a rain and at 636 it was raining on my windshield. It lasted to about 638 and then it blew right on by but God was letting a man know that needed something from God. You may not see the answer in the natural. I'm talking to somebody tonight. You may not yet see the answer in the natural but a Tune your ear in the spirit realm because the spirit is talking and the spirit is ministering. And long before, long before any breakthroughs came in the ministry where we were pastoring, long before I could see all the answers in the natural, I had a word from God driving down west, down I-70, that God was with me and everything is going to be all right and I am walking with you and your family. I'm here to tell somebody today it's time to tune our ears to the Spirit and hear what the Spirit is saying. No matter what you may be seeing or facing in the natural, God is able to get a word to you. God is able to speak to you in the Spirit realm. God is able to give you strength and power and anointing and give you a word. Come on, somebody, let's just worship our God right now. There's Holy Ghost in the house tonight. Hallelujah, there's Holy Ghost in the house tonight. I'm telling you, there's liberty here. We felt it yesterday. There's liberty in the house. There's a shout in the house. There's praise in the house. Hallelujah. There's something that's bursting forth in this atmosphere. There's something that's bursting forth in this house. Hallelujah, there's something that's bursting forth. Hallelujah. It was honest in Christian education. It was honest in worship service yesterday and tonight. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is coming to the Pentecostal Lee Road with a voice in the Spirit letting you know I am with you. Hallelujah. 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 1 Kings chapter 18 came to pass our story. We pulled our text from verse 41. Well, let's go back and look. 1 Kings 18 verse 1. They've been in a famine for three and a half years at the word of the prophet God had put upon Elijah to speak that it wouldn't rain until I give word and the prophet would not give word until God gave word. So three and a half years into this story, after many days, the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, go show yourself to Ahab. Now that's a much bigger statement than at face value if you just glance because Ahab's been trying to kill the prophet. He's been searching far and wide. So when God's saying, go show yourself to Ahab, that's, that's a mouthful right there because this is the man that's been trying to take his life. But you go show yourself to him and, and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And so we're going to jump to verse 41 in a moment where we read our text. But please understand, in verse 41, when Elijah is saying, and here he's, he's telling the king after three and a half years it's going to rain. And then in verse 41, he's hearing the sound of abundance of rain. This is a promise of rain in a season of drought. Isn't it interesting that God is, he, God is not afraid of drought to be able to promise rain. God can promise a feast in the middle of a famine. God is not bound by what we see. There was drought on every side. No rain for three and a half years and it didn't look like it was any chance it was going to rain. But God, he's not deterred by a desert. He's not deterred by the wilderness. God is not deterred by the famine. God is not deterred by the drought that was on the earth for three and a half years. God 
can promise rain when it doesn't seem like there's one fact in the favor that rain can come. God can promise a miracle when it doesn't seem like there's any chance the answer can come. God doesn't need things to all line up for him to be able to provide. God is the God of the supernatural and the miraculous. He steps into famine. He promises abundance. He steps into drought. He promises that the rains are going to come because God has a way of stepping into the bleakest of situations and promising victory. I find it almost seems that God enjoys those moments. It almost seems he relishes telling you abundance is coming when you're walking in the drought. It's almost like he, he relishes providing and, and performing under those circumstances where no one gets the credit but he and he alone. In verse 41, Elijah is feeling pretty bold. He says to Ahab, get thee up. Eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Now, if we read verse 42 through the end of the chapter, which we will in just a moment, we would understand there's not even a cloud visible yet. I don't know if this terrain and territory was similar to Kansas, but I can just tell you, you can look as far out the right window, the left window, the front window, the back window, there were no clouds. And in this situation, how do we know there were no clouds? I'll get ahead of myself for a moment because after much prayer, he finally is going to see a cloud like a man's hand. So at this point, there are no clouds. So I have a question for us on this Monday night. How did he hear the sound of abundance of rain? There wasn't even a cloud yet. How did he hear the abundance of rain? If it wasn't even drizzling yet, I mean much less drizzling, not even clouds, not even dark with clouds. How did the prophet hear the abundance of rain? It's key for this church and it's key for our lives tonight. Amen. I'll tell you how he heard it. He heard in the spirit realm before there was one piece of evidence in the natural realm that it was coming to pass. And I've come to preach to us on this Monday night. Our ears are to be attuned to the spirit, not to what we see with the naked eye, not to what we see in the natural, but to what what we hear in the spirit. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He heard it. Somebody say in the spirit. Revelation chapter two. We'll move quickly. Revelation 2 and 3, the Lord gave messages to seven churches. They were literal churches of that day. I've also heard many taught, teach that they were representative of church ages, but the seven churches that were spoke to in Revelation 2 and 3, there were parts of the message that were common to all seven churches. Three statements were common to all seven churches, which lets me know whatever whatever church body, whatever church age, whatever, every single church group that's gonna make it to heaven is gonna, these, one, these statements common to all three churches means anybody in the church, anywhere that makes it to heaven is gonna have to follow those three statements. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. He that overcometh. And then the third thing is there is a, a, a promise given. And then I know thy works. So we know God knows our works. We know that, that, that the Lord uh, is paying such close attention that his church, he knows their works. He knows that they're overcomers. But listen what he said. He that does what? Have an ear. Let him hear 
what the Spirit saith to the church. If God had that statement repeated to all seven churches in Revelation 2 and Revelation 3, I wrote down the verses. If you just want to look at them, Revelation 2, 7, let's put one of them on the board. There it is, John, Revelation 2, 11. He that hath an ear, Revelation 2, 17, Revelation 2, 29, Revelation 3, 6, Revelation 3, 13, Revelation 3 and verse 22. What If God had that repeated to his church seven times, then it must be be vital. It must be imperative that his church have an ear to what thus saith the Spirit. That people feel with the Holy Ghost aren't just having their ears attuned to the natural realm but we are spiritual people. Amen. That have our spiritual ears attuned. What is the Spirit saying to the church? What is God saying to the church in this hour? What is God saying to the church in this day it lets us know we must be attuned to the spirit the spirit will be talking are we listening are we hearing what the spirit has to say because if so we will hear things from God's spirit before they unfold on the earth we will hear things from God's arena before they unfold in our arena. Driving west that day, I heard God. He, 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 he already had impressed me that he was with me and everything was going to be all right. But when that rain came across my windshield, I knew I'm hearing something from the Spirit. Amen. Now, I could get home to facts that may still didn't seem like the abundance of rain, but I knew my God told me, I've got favor on your life. I've got blessing in your life. Your family's going to be all right. I'm going to keep leading in God. How did I know that? because I heard something in the spirit realm. I heard something from the heavenlies that I could hold on to. So let's go back to 1 Kings 18 and let's look at verse 42. Let's walk through those verses for a few minutes. Ahab, after Elijah said in verse 41, get thee up, eat and drink. Well, Ahab obeyed the prophet. He just went on up to eat and drink. What did Elijah do? He went up to the top of Carmel. He cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. Now let me back up here for a moment. The Bible doesn't explicitly say that Elijah went into prayer or into intercession. But I would say that the expression he put his face between his knees is a position of prayer. Now this isn't biblical and you won't find this in any commentary, but I'd like to say Elijah was a pretty limber man. You can smile, that's not real deep. But I tried it in the room today just to see, and I can't get my, my head anywhere close to between my knees. So I might can pray laying on my face. I might can pray walking, but I, I can't quite pray like Elijah prayed. Turn to your neighbor and say, pray for the preacher. Now y'all going to have this mental picture of me in the hotel trying to see if I can pray like that. But I present to you that it was a posture and a position of prayer. He had faith in his heart that something was going to happen. Do you see the order of these events? God is doing a beautiful and a powerful work in individuals and families in this church and in this church body and leadership and ministry. And thank you all for being so kind. We're hearing some things in the spirit. We're seeing some evidence in the spirit. But I want you to notice what happened with Elijah. When he began to hear something in the spirit, did he just go la di da on a whistle walk? Amen. And just said, no, no, no. He said, I've heard it. Now I'm going to my God in prayer until it unfolds. Amen. When we hear stuff in the spirit, that's when we act 
activate our faith. That's when we activate our faith walk and our prayer walk and our trust walk. And we say, now, God, I've heard it. I've heard what the Spirit says is happening. I've heard what the Spirit says is coming. It's as if God lifts us up and puts us into the future, lets us taste it, lets us smell it, lets us sense it. And then he pulls us up and sets us back down where the facts may not match everything the Spirit's saying. But now we've got a vision. Now we've heard a voice. Now we're sensing something stirring in the spirit realm. And the man of God said, I've got a word from God. I've got a promise from God. I've heard a sound in the spirit realm. Amen. Now I'm going to begin calling on God until it's in earth as it is in heaven. Somebody hear me. How did Jesus teach his disciples to pray? In earth as it is. So the Lord in the spirit realm will lift you up to the heavenlies and say, I want you to see what's going on in the heavens. I want you to hear it, taste it, smell it. This is my purpose. This is my will. This is my plan. This was what I'm doing at the Pentecostals of Lee Road. This was what I'm doing in the Byers family. This is what I'm doing in the Bonvillian family. This is what I'm doing in the Wilkes family. This is what I'm doing in the Trinicost family in this church and the leadership. This is what I'm doing in Bishop and Sister. All of you, this is what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing in your life, in your life, in your life. I'm letting you hear it in the spirit. Amen. So tomorrow you'll wake up and say, in earth as it is in heaven. I heard it when I was in the heavenly realm. I heard it in the spirit. Now I'm going to pray it into existence in my kids. I'm going to pray it into existence in my church body. I'm going to pray it into existence in our home. Revival is coming. The power of breakthrough is happening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Mm. Brother Lane, you did a great job leading us. I just saw your face. Where'd you go? There you are. You did a great job leading us, singing and worshiping yesterday. Amen. And I, today at the hotel room, I kept hearing, I hear the chains fall. Remember that line? You ought to. We sang it a few times. <laughs> what Brother Tenney say about our modern worship songs? He said they're 7 11 songs. Write seven words and sing them 11 times. No, nah, that's a great song. But today in my hotel room, I was like, man, I, 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 I wish somebody would just, just rework that a little bit and write a song, I Hear the Rain Falling. Because I, I was hearing the sound of abundance of rain. It almost works. It almost works. I hear the rain. Where do you hear it at? He didn't. The servant went and looked and said, I see nothing. nothing. Now, God's blessing us. We're seeing a lot more than nothing. We're seeing beautiful things happening in our lives. But sometimes in the spirit realm, you hear it. It's what's heaven's point of view. And then you operate in the earthly realm. But you're able to wake up the next morning and walk through that wet next week saying, in the name of Jesus, I've heard it now, God. I've tasted it now, God, in earth as it is in heaven. Let your will unfold. Let your liberty come. To, I felt that liberty, Lord, when I was in that altar. Those, Oh, I tasted it, Lord. I felt it, but I got home and that, that old stuff is wanting to come back on me. Those, I tasted it in earth as it is in heaven. I, I, I believe, I, I I speak complete victory, complete liberty, complete anointing in the Holy Ghost. We got to stop right now. Somebody's got to lift their hands. There's anointing happening in this room. There's power from the throne room. You did hear from God. I got to tell somebody, you did hear from God. Just because you saw a different circumstance does not mean you didn't hear from God. You heard from God. You're just praying in earth as it is in heaven. Let it come to pass in the natural as I felt it in the spirit name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
the name of Jesus. I'm speaking to somebody in the Holy Ghost right now. You're saying, Brother Albritton, if you knew how if you knew how dreary the drought was, you'd be careful what you're saying tonight. But I'm speaking to somebody right now in Jesus' name. There's abundance coming to your drought. There's breakthrough coming to your journey. There's breakthrough coming to your journey. Amen. There is feast coming to your famine. In the name of Jesus, I speak spiritual abundance. I speak abundance of rain. I speak abundance of liberty. I speak abundance of joy. I speak abundance of revival and restoration that leads to harvest and souls and breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I can't go further right now. Somebody's got to just praise God on your promise right now. Somebody's got to thank God. Brother Albritton, it's a drought. Brother Albritton, I'm not seeing a lot of evidence right now. You did hear from God. You did hear it in the spirit. Now you're just activating in the natural what you heard in the spiritual. Absolute, absolute and complete liberty, absolute and complete victory, absolute and complete power comes in this house. God bless Bishop right now. God bless Sister Marcelli right now. It's going to rain in your desert. It's going to blossom like a rose. God ain't done with you yet. Drop kick the devil through the goalpost of life. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. That's it. He kept on praying. It went from there is nothing to I see a little cloud. You keep on believing what you heard in the spirit. You keep on holding on to the promise of God. This is just God's will right now. Somebody, somebody, there, there is absolute liberty coming in the house. There's absolute breakthrough of joy and peace and power coming in your house and in the life in Jesus' holy name. It's the will of God right now. This is a praise break. This is a worship break. Hallelujah. This is liberty and the Holy Ghost coming. I got to say it again. Some of you tasted liberty for about five minutes in the altar yesterday. And you wonder, where is it going so fast? Amen. You did hear from God. Liberty does come to your life. Liberty does come from your house. Exercise that liberty in the Holy Ghost right now. Exercise that anointing in the spirit right now. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Hell, get your hands off. Back down and back off. This is God. God's children, God's church, God's people. Jesus, come near. Jesus, come near. Jesus, come near. It's the will of God right now. You just keep on praising God for a moment. Don't worry about the preacher. You don't worry about me right now. You just keep lifting up the name of Jesus right now. Get your breakthrough in the Holy Ghost. Get renewed in the spirit right now. Let virtue come on you right now. Some of you've tasted it. That's it, Brother Jathan. Some of you've tasted it a little bit. On some of the Sundays or Mondays, you've tasted it for five or ten minutes to go back home to the facts not changing. But I'm telling you to pray. I'm telling you to speak in faith in earth as it is in heaven. He said, servant, go look. And the servant went and looked. I see nothing. But he kept praying. And he kept sending the servant. And finally, after seven times, uh, the prophet prayed all day. After seven times, 
times. I see a cloud as a man's hand. He said, you better hurry up. Uh, there's an abundance. Uh, there's a flood. Uh, rain is coming. I'm talking to somebody in the house of God. Uh, keep on looking out the window. Keep on calling on the name of the Lord. Go look one more time. Uh, pray a little longer if you have to. Go look one more time. Uh, hallelujah. You did hear from God. You did hear in the spirit realm. Hear, hear me for just a moment. The verses, I copied them from my Bible and just pasted them. And I highlighted certain segments. And while I'm standing here just looking down, I just keep seeing the first time he sent the servant, there is nothing. Then a little further down, it said, there ariseth a little cloud. That's highlighted. And then I go down a few verses and it says, the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain. It started. He saw it. He heard it in the spirit. Then he went to prayer and didn't stop bombarding heaven until he, he began to process something's gonna come from heaven to earth. First time he checked, there is nothing. Second time, time or somewhere down the line after he kept praying and sending the servant a little cloud and then a few moments later the heaven was black with clouds and wind don't stop believing don't stop activating what you heard in the spirit don't stop activating if I can say it this way keep looking out the window for the rain cloud keep praying keep believing keep hoping keep calling on the name of the Lord we're hearing a sound in the spirit and I speak abundance is coming to your family I'm not talking about financial wealth if God wants to do that that's part of it but I'm talking about spirit I'm talking about spirit revival I'm talking about spirit liberty I'm talking about revival that ends up in harvest that ends up in growth I'm talking about spiritual wealth and spiritual riches and blessings from almighty God I hear the sound of abundance I I hear the sound of abundance. I hear the sound of abundance. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. He kind of rabba shanda tahaya. Now, now, now hear me. I want, I want to give just a moment of instruction. 
but I feel like God's about to do something through the men of this church and ladies you're praying all over this room and you're walking in faith but I saw Brother Jathan make a lap or two walk and run and I saw a couple men get out and begin to walk and the Holy Ghost just impressed me these men are about to march claiming victory for what God is sending to this church hallelujah so man I just want you to walk you can go this way some of you can take the far aisle some of you can take the second aisle but let's just go let's see what way is that that's counterclockwise. there you go you see which way you're going just begin to clap I want you to just begin to clap you want to lift your hands if you want to you want to lift your voice ladies keep praying all over this house you can join them in a minute men don't stop your worship don't stop that cry clap let your hands be lifted let your voice be lifted I hear the sound hallelujah come on some man shout in the Holy Ghost come on somebody pray in the spirit as you're marching revival comes to the Pentecost that's it that's what I'm talking about there revival comes to the Pentecost as a lead road revival comes to this atmosphere revival comes to this sanctuary revival come on claim it that's it Daniel that's it reclaim let that let that come all over you from head to toe let that come over you from head to toe revival Pray with me for Gary right now. God does a work in the spirit right now. Gary, God does a work in the spirit, my friend. God does a work in the spirit right now. I to the sole of your feet from the top of your head to the sole of your feet hell get your hands off of families hell get your hands ha ha hallelujah hallelujah Ladies, why not if you feel to, just step out and join them. God's doing a work right now. Somebody's marching and praying. Ladies, feel free. Just step out. Let that come on. Let it happen. God's doing something in your life. God's doing, I know this is old-fashioned. Ha ha. Amen. We're claiming victory. If you feel to stop and get your breakthrough, let it happen in Jesus' name. Stop and get your breakthrough if you need to. It's happening in Jesus' name. It's a Holy Ghost night. It's a Holy Ghost night. I'm hearing something. Amen. Something's been coming on you. The whole the whole victory. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You're getting layers each service. God's doing a complete work. A complete work. Bless her. Bless her family. Bless her home. Bless her room get your anointing tonight in the name I hear a sound in the spirit I'm gonna keep walking it out till I see the evidence I, I may see nothing I'm gonna keep praying I may see nothing I'm gonna keep believing because soon I'm gonna see something the size of a man's hand that lets me know it's all coming the clouds coming the rain is coming the power of God I'm telling you Lee Road is happening He kanda ya la 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 ba sha ra ba ba ha. He kanda ya la 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 ba sha ta ta ha ya. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of that's it. That's it. That's it. Amen. You're getting blessed even while you're claiming. I'm hearing from God. I'm hearing something from the throne room, and I'm gonna walk it out in faith. Uh, I'm gonna believe God for the cloud like the man's hand, because soon it's gonna be dark with cloud. Rain is coming. Revival is coming. I hear it in the spirit. 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 Revival comes to the Pentecostals of Lee Road. Revival comes to your home and to your family. All right, let's start gathering at the front. I know you marched a little while. Let's just start gathering. Just fill in all the front. God's not finished in this house. The next few moments, power falls. Oh, no, that's it. Let's just come. Just come. Just come. With your hands lifted. With your hearts lifted. With your spirits lifted to Almighty God.
Come on, somebody tell them, hell, get your hands off my family. I done heard, I've done heard from the spirit now. Get your hands off of my anointing. Come on, that's how my, that's it, my friend. I'm hearing something in the heavenlies. I'm hearing something in the heavenlies. I'm hearing something in the heavenlies. And I'm going to activate it. There's a special anointing in this house. There's a virtue in this house. There's power from the throne room in this house. There's power. Get your break. You can get renewed in the Holy Ghost. I don't care how long it's been. Your calling can be affirmed in this atmosphere. The hand of God on your life is being affirmed in this atmosphere. Revival comes to Lee Road. Abundance comes to Lee Road. I speak it. I'm hearing it in the spirit. You're hearing it in the spirit. Now we're going to keep praying until the clouds get all dark and everything happens that God wants to happen. But we're hearing it in the spirit. Pray the miraculous. We pray the supernatural. We pray the affirmation of the spirit of almighty God. Revival comes and everything that comes with it. I hear it in the spirit. You hear it in the spirit.
God, we give you glory and we give you praise tonight, God. Please don't stop praying. Please don't stop praying. I just want to share some things that I feel heavily impressed in the Holy Ghost to share. We could easily mistake even this moment right now as time-wasting. But what the man of God spoke was that once he heard it, there had to be travail and there had to be labors of prayer. This is what God has impressed upon me so strongly. When he set the garden in perfect arrangement, the ground was watered from beneath first. There was abundance that came from below before there was ever an abundance of showers that fell from above. God is going to bring it both from above and from beneath. God's going to bring it from without, but it's first got to break open within. We look at the skies, we look without, we look above, and we want it to fall in the external realm. But what God is doing in these preparatory weeks, what he's doing tonight, is he's allowing there to be a breaking up of the fountains of the deep within us. There's gonna come abundance because here, here's the thing. We will never be able to fully appreciate the bounty of God's abundance from above and from without until we are fulfilled with the abundance and the saturation of what God is wanting to give us within. As it is in heaven, that's above. So let it be in the earth, that's beneath. But you and I, we are that dust. He formed us of the dust of the ground in paradise that was being watered from the broken up fountains beneath. God is breaking something us, breaking up something within us so that there are wellsprings of, of joy, of, of peace, of fulfillment, of, of comfort, of, of refreshing. And then as he breaks it up within us, we're going to begin to look for the heavens above uh, to drop open and the windows of heaven to fall upon us externally. But God is doing something internally. We're breaking ourselves up at the altar of prayer. We're allowing the spirit to water us for that which has been dry and arid within only to then be ready to receive that which God is going to allow to come in abundance from above. The ground must be prepared to receive the abundance because if not, God can shower us and this is what I feel, God can shower us with all kinds of things for the moment. And as soon as it saturates and, and absorbs into the soil of our lives, if there is not a breaking up of the deep within us, then it will be just a passing moment, a passing season. But I believe this in the Holy Ghost, that it's going to come from beneath as it begins to fall from above. And I believe that it's going to create flood waters. It's going to create flood waters that will not subside and that will remain and flourish, cause our lives to flourish as a result. But as the body, the soil of the spirit within us has got to be broken up and God's going to begin to bubble up within us and bring that forth. And it's going to come from above, no doubt. It's going to come from above but it's also going to come from beneath to create floodwaters. I shared yesterday, Brother Holston just confirmed it to me. I told the church at Mandeville yesterday, I said, just be prepared. Be prepared because I, 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 I understand in the practical, we're dealing with some, some things on the calendar. We want to be sensitive. We know that we, we can't drive the flock because we'll get weary and we'll die on the journey. But I told them, prepare, prepare for a season of fasting because that's what I've been feeling in the spirit, a season of fasting. And, and, and I, I told them, I said, I know we got some things we have to get out of the way, but prepare for a season of fasting 
because I feel that. I feel that for us. And I, I, I want us to be praying. And, and, and perhaps between the week of the 9th and the week of the 16th, we can call a solemn assembly. It's been, it's been a long time. We haven't fasted as a corporate body since January. But, but I really feel that we may do a corporate-wide three-day fast that week between from the 9th to the 16th. But, but I'm really feeling a season of fasting. And, and so I'm just putting us on notice. I know we've got a quip coming up and we've got a lot going on. So that, that may change. I want to be wise. I do want to be wise and sensitive to, to all the other elements that are going on. But I will, I will say this in all humility and respect that there's nothing more important than what God is wanting to do in this season, a quip or VBS or anything else otherwise. What God wants to do in the spirit is, is pre, pre, predominant, preeminent in, in, our, in our lives. But, but certainly we want to be, be wise stewards. But I believe that God is leading us into that because he's going to prepare us for what is going to come so that we can retain it and it not just quickly fade away. And uh, I'm so grateful for the word of God, so thankful for each and every one of you being here tonight. God is up to something. Let's continue to pray and speak it. Let's speak it in the earth, what we're believing is on its way from heaven. And I believe that we're gonna see it come because it's already starting to drizzle in Jesus' name. God bless you. I, I bless you tonight with peace and joy and comfort and hope and strength. Boo, I love you, sir. God bless you. And everybody get home safely in Jesus' name. And we will see you on Wednesday night for prayer. God love you and keep you in Jesus' name.